Hello again, my name is David Watts from Lenovo Press, and today we're going to be talking about the new ThinkSystem SR655. And I have with me today Russ Resnick. Russ is the worldwide segment manager for one and two socket servers. How are you doing, Russ? Great. How are you, David? Very good. So this, the SR655 is a 2U one socket server. Russ, um, it's an AMD server. That's right. Why is Lenovo bringing a general purpose server like this one in, into the market? Well, Why we now? We've been working with uh, our customers and uh, AMD for quite a while now. And while we introduced an AMD 7001 series for our hyperscale customers, we now find with the 7002 design that it really has attributes that uh, will work well for our general purpose customers. And we, I mean, we already have a number of 2U systems in our portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, how does this 2U fit, fit into that portfolio? Well, typically a 2U server is used for dense storage or dense accelerators like GPUs or FPGA cards. And <clears throat> because this is a one socket server, but it has such a large number of cores and especially IO lanes with 128 PCI Gen 4 lanes, we felt that we could really take advantage of a 2U uh, chassis. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll take you through that here in this video to show you all the rich features of this system. Yeah. So, I mean, with, with, this, with, with the um, very uh, n large number of, of, of lanes, mm -hmm. PCI lanes, and a number of cores, right. what type of applications could take advantage of that? So, the, with the large number of cores, you certainly can see that virtualization is a good fit, which includes VDI, and especially in a 2U server we can, where we can pack in a number of GPUs, uh, these systems will work really well for VDI. The other thing is because it's a 2U, we can put in a lot of NVMe drives, we can put in a lot of three and a half inch drives. So for software defined storage or video security, those workloads also fit well into this. Yeah, okay, so now we have a num we have two systems here with different configurations. We have a number of parts to show you as well. Um, let's dive into it. Yes. Let's start with the uh, this system over here. Mm -hmm. um, let me take the air baffle off. Um, the the big the big item to show here, of course, is the is the processor, right? The yes. AMD processor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is the uh, AMD Epic seven thousand two series processor, which supports up to sixty four cores and one hundred and twenty eight PCI lanes, all in the single socket. And should note the PCI lanes are Gen four, right? Which are twice the bandwidth of the current Gen three that's shipping. Yeah. So with this system, you've not only got uh, more PCI lanes, because they are Gen 4, we could double the bandwidth. Mm -hmm. So there's a significant amount of throughput available mm -hmm. through the PCI That's subsystem. right. And this system was designed from the ground up to be compatible with the 7002 series, which means it takes full advantage mm -hmm. of PCI Gen 4, the faster memory speeds uh, that the 7002 series supports over the 7001 series, and uh, also supports the full power needs of the 64 core 7002 series processor. Right. Now, the, the server has 16 uh, memory slots, so with the 64 uh, gig DIMMs, that's a total of one terabyte. Mm -hmm. For a single socket system, that's a lot of memory. Right. Yep. Um, the, the processor has eight uh, memory lanes. A, a eight memory, memory channels, channels right. Memory channels, mm -hmm. I should say, yes. Mm -hmm. um, two DIMMs per channel. Right. So if you, if you have uh, one DIMM per channel, if you have eight DIMMs installed, mm -hmm. then those can operate up to 3,200 megahertz. That's correct. Yep. And at two DIMMs per channel, it'll run at 2933 megahertz. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, some choices there for you um, to get the most out of a memory subsystem. Um, the th let me look at, uh, point you to the front. Um, this system here has um, two and a half inch drive bays. What we have installed here is, is um, eight uh, NVMe and eight SAS SATA drives. Uh, the server supports a variety of, of choices here um, in, in sets of eight. Um, these, the two backplanes, you can see the edge of one here. This is the NVMe, and this is the SAS SATA one. There's an additional slot here for a third backplane here. And you can mix and match those. You can mix and match the SATA, SAS, and NVMe backplanes pretty much any yeah. way you want. You can have configure this as an NVMe-rich server, for example, um, with up to 32 NVMe drives, if That's you wish. That's right. And we'll go through how all those drives fit into mm -hmm. the system. But, but basically, you can have 24 two and a half of them. At the, at the front, mm -hmm. or if you prefer, you can have three and a half inch drives. Right, right? and you have 12 of those in the front. Right, so we have uh, variations that are either 12 SAS SATA mm -hmm. or a 12 bay configuration that is eight SAS SATA and four any bay. That's right. right? And, the, and the any bays can support NVMe or SAS or SATA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, or you can have an eight bay um, three and a half inch. That's as right. Well. Yeah, so a variety of choices, or you can have no drives at all at the front. It's, 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 the choices are, are quite flexible there. Yeah. 
So on the front of the server, we have the usual operator panel. You can see at the top there, there's the um, ID button and the power button. And there are also LEDs for um, ID and system error and network activity. Um, now, this particular one, let's uh, go further on. The, this section here um, has the um, a slot for the internal RAID adapter. That's right. Um, if, if, you, if you want to have one. Mm -hmm. um, there's onboard SATA if you don't need a RAID card. That's great. Now, up to 16. Mm -hmm. um, SATA ports. Uh, SATA, SATA ports, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, next to it is the NV, uh, sorry, the M.2. Let me just pop that out. Um, I've removed the cable just to make it easier to access. Um, so this is the new style M.2 module that we have. Um, if you recall on our other Think System servers, um, the M.2 is a vertically mounted uh, card with M.2 cards either side. This one, it's flat, and that the M.2 is a side by side. A little bit better airflow. Um, allows for different choices and, right. and is different a higher capacity M.2 drives, yeah. especially. Yeah, uh, and that that fits in a, in a in a bay that's um, uh, there on the on the board. Um, underneath that, and we'll show on this system here in a second. There's also space for super caps. So these um, are the uh, flash power modules for the RAID cards. Um, if you have on have a RAID card, the 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 baffle also has space for for uh, super caps as well. In fact, the one that we have for this card here, which is the RAID 930 um, I, 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 I. Mm -hmm. um, its super cap is mounted just <clears> there on, on, the, on the air baffle. I would also point out, Russ, that in this section here, let me turn this around for you, um, this is where all the, uh, or many of the um, PCIe and connections lanes are. lanes and SATA ports are connected. Right. right. And a lot, of, a lot <clears> of our connections are cabled. You can see the back planes are cabled, uh, and you'll, we'll point out some of the riser cards have cabled connections as well. Um, this allows for ease of reconfiguration. Right. It's a and very it, versatile system. Right. It allows us to configure the system in many different ways, uh, taking advantage of uh, the large number of PCI lanes. Yeah. So if we move over to this system here, you'll see that what we have here is eight two and a half inch mid drives. So these are hotswap right. drives, mm -hmm. um, but they're inside the server. So if you need to deservice these, you remove the cover while the system's still running. That's and right. And then you can lever up this to give you access to eight drives. And these can be SAS SATA or they can be NVMe. That's right. Depending on configuration. Mm -hmm. And then to service the components underneath, you'd rotate it back. And there we have the processor. I'll remove the air baffle. Um, we have access to the, the processor and the memory. Um, the super caps installed here. If the RAID card was here or the M.2, you could access all those components here. Now, this is a two and a half inch one. Right. We, we also, also have a three and a half inch version of the same kind of right. mid bay arrangement. Once again, these would be SAS SATA. Right. So if you have a if you want to have a server that is three and a half inch rich, mm -hmm. then you can have three and a half inch in the front, middle, and as we'll show you in a moment, the rear drives as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you finish access this, it's a fairly easy process just to close that up again. Um, now, if we if we rotate this round. I'll show you um, at the, the back, the, uh, as well as drives at the front and the middle, you can also have drives at the rear. So, so we have a pack of four two and a half inch drives for the rear. Yeah, and that would mount um, in this space above the, above the power supply, mm -hmm. just like so. Um, and these can be again um, SAS SATA or NVMe. And NVMe. Yeah. Right. Or if you, again, if you have the three and a half inch Russ. Yeah, this is a, uh, a set of four drives for the rear. So you can have uh, four three and a half inch SAS SATA drives in the rear as well. Yeah, and that would rest across across the entire rear of, of the of mm -hmm. the server, still giving you access to two slots. That's right, um, the and the OCPMs yeah. as well. Yeah. Now on the on the on the matter of slots, let's talk about those here. The system can have up to eight rear accessible slots. So three and three, and then the two. Can we pass that over to me then. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is the. The, the, uh, another choice, uh, uh, the th Riser 3, that gives you access to two additional slots, and those go like so. Right. Now you'll and, we have, and we have two choices of those. Yeah. These are a pair of by 8s or a pair of by 16s. Flip that over and have a look. Mm -hmm. So you can see the difference mm -hmm. is that the by 16, the pair of by 16s have four, one, two, three there, and then flip back over, four by 8 connections to give you the 32 lanes you need for two 16s. Mm -hmm. And that's all, again, part of this reconfiguring, the, the ease of configuration where everything's cabled through to the PCI uh, ports mm -hmm. at, in the middle of the server. Yeah, given that the, the CPU has so many lanes, we wanted to ensure that we use them all mm -hmm. or, or had capability to use them all within the server for various configurations, especially as we talked about using these for uh, rich uh, GPU or accelerator support. Right. With, so with GPU support, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. um, the server can support um, 
six of the low profile, the T4, Nvidia mm -hmm. T4, for mm -hmm. example, um, those can be installed in these slots, or you can have the V100s, the, the double width, full right. length cards, mm -hmm. and you can have three, three of those. Three of those, yes. right. One, two, three across. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have the mid drives in, the, in that configuration, um, but you can see that this is quite a versatile system, allowing you to have all different, all sorts of different choices, um, if, if you want them. Um, now the other components at the front of the system, um, the usual ports, and video and serial is there. We've got a management port for remote access, um, two USB 3.1 connectors um, at the front. Um, the video, we also have a video port at the front. That's optional if you want. Um, at the front, uh, did we we talked earlier about, about mm -hmm. the the front of the server, the mm -hmm. usual operator panel there. Um, of interest too is this OCP uh, uh, slot here. Um, Russ OCP is the, the. This is the new uh, uh, standard for network cards. OCP is the Open Compute uh, platform, mm -hmm. and this is the uh, uh, OCP MES three, which right. is uh, sixteen lanes of uh, PCI Gen four. And it's. One of its one of its design factors is that it's easy to remove, um, uh, just simply removing the th un undoing the thumb screw and then mm -hmm. pulling it out mm -hmm. while while the server's powered off. Right. So our plan is to have dual and quad port uh, Ethernet uh, cards up to 100 gigabit. It's PCIe 4 again. Yeah, with PCIe 4. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of of bandwidth capability. That's right. Um, with this port, so a lot of choices will be will be available as time goes on. Easy to to install. Yep. Okay, so I think that's about it. Um, you see, as we said, this is a, a very versatile system, a lot of different configuration choices. That's right. Uh, being a 2U system allows us to fully take advantage of the, the AMD EPIC 7002 processor. That's right. A lot right. of lanes, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, Russ, I think that's about it. Yeah, I um, think so. Yep. Uh, we're doing this uh, video here in the uh, br Executive Briefing Center here in Morrisville, North Carolina. So we invite you to get hold of your uh, Lenovo sales rep or your business partner and uh, see about coming here. And uh, you can talk to all the uh, Lenovo experts in mm -hmm. many fields. We have uh, uh, developers are over in Building 7 mm -hmm. just across the lake. So Learn about the entire portfolio. Yeah. yeah. And don't forget, you can also check out uh, all this detail on uh, Lenovo Press, the product guide for this server at yeah. Lenovo Press. Yep, we'll have the product guide available there, um, a data sheet, and the 3D tour if you want to see more, uh, move, mm. move, move the model around to see the different components. Mm. All the information is available on LenovoPress.com. I'll add some links to the, to the description of the video as well. So, hope you found the video useful. Russ, thanks very much. Thank you for having me. Yep, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>